You can see more blessings in your life than you can possibly imagine. When you come close to God, you enter a world of new possibilities. It says in Ephesians 3 verse 20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Well, hello and welcome to today's King's Church International online service. For those who don't know me, my name is Claire and I am part of Pastor Wes and Pastor Adriana's leadership team. It's a great honour for me to share the word for today. In our current series on multi-generational blessings, we have already seen how God brought many blessings to Abraham. He was one man who received a great promise to become a father of multitudes. Abraham had very little when he left the land of his father. He had nothing, but he ended up very wealthy with possessions, cattle, finances and respect. God blessed him in every way and he wants to bless you and me. Today we are going to look further at the life of Isaac and a time when Isaac came into a year of unprecedented favour of God. He went through tough times and faced difficulties including similar, similar situations to his father. But when he stayed in the right place with God, put him first in everything and obeyed him, the Bible tells us that he reaped a hundredfold in one year. Let's look at the scripture. Genesis 26 verse 12 to 14 says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. As a church, our theme for this year is the great harvest. So what does this mean? Well, this year can be a year like no other year for you and your family and our church. Let's learn some key lessons from Isaac's life. Firstly, we have to sow in order to reap. Isaac planted. We have to sow. We cannot expect to reap a great harvest if we do not sow. As much as a farmer prepares the soil and the ground for his harvest, we too need to do the same in order that we should see people come to Christ. Galatians 6 Verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If we sow in the flesh, we shall reap in the flesh. But if we sow with the Lord and into his kingdom, we shall reap not only in this life, but for eternity. So what are you sowing into? Are you sowing more into your career, your business, your social life than your spiritual life? These are only questions that you can answer. Maybe the Lord is revealing things to you right now. Maybe it's time for you to readdress your priorities to seek the God life, not just the good life, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. We need to trust the Lord to provide and bless us as we seek his kingdom first. We can be sure that he will pour out his blessing on us as he did for Isaac. We need to ensure that we sow the right things in order to reap a great harvest in our families and in our church. We need to sow by living right with God and man. To know the blessing of God, we need to live in the right way and have a right relationship with the Lord. We need to live right 
in every area of our lives, to treat each person with respect in how we speak and our actions towards them. We need to ensure that everything we do is above board in our business lives and our personal lives. We must not just be saints on Sundays, but treat people right each and every day. Isaiah 10 verse 12 says, Sow righteousness for yourselves, reap the fruit of unfailing love, and break up your unploughed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. Everything in life stems from our relationship with the Lord. We need to come into the right relationship with him each and every day. Just as we need fresh food and water each day, we need fresh spiritual food from the Lord each and every day. We need to start by asking the Holy Spirit to come into our lives afresh, to cleanse and purify us, to lead and guide us, to train and correct us. David wrote in Psalm 24, verse three to four, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Whilst we live in the world, it's important that we stay close to the Holy Spirit, that we are sensitive to his voice and his prompting, that we put our trust in him alone and not the things that this world tries to, to get us to focus on, like power, fame, success. In Romans 12 verse 2, Paul tells us to abandon the chase for pleasure, possessions and status, to stop living like everyone else. He urges that although we are in the world, we are not of the world, and each and every day we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds through our relationship with Christ. We need to sow in tears with prayer. Psalm 126 verse 5 to 6 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those that sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. If you need to see change in your situation, you need to cry out to the Lord in tears and prayer. Hannah sowed in tears for a child and the Lord heard her. Cry out to the Lord. If you have barrenness spiritually, physically, financially, then now is your time to cry out to the Lord. When we really cry out to the Lord with great compassion, we will reap. Prayer is essential to your life as Christians. Martin Luther said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. This is how essential prayer is. Before we do anything, we must pray. Pray for the great harvest to come. We need to learn to develop this more, to sow in passion for our loved ones and also the lost of the world. We need to sow in evangelism. We need to invite people to come and share in the good news of the Lord, to call people, to tell them the good news, to invite them to groups and services such as this. All we need to do is invite them. The Lord will work out the rest. Matthew 22 verse nine says, so go to the street corners and invite anyone you can find to the banquet. If we never invite anyone, how can we expect them to come? To share the good news is a fundamental part of being a Christian, a follower of Christ. One of Jesus' last requests to his disciples, which is known as the Great Commission, was go and make disciples of all nations. This was not a suggestion, but an instruction from God himself. We need to sow in giving. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly 
will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. We will reap according to what we sow. You can expect that God will honour us if we sow into God's kingdom. If we invest in God, he will invest in us. So what is your attitude to giving? Do you give freely? Is your attitude freely I have received, so freely I give, or do we struggle with this? Are we happy to sow generously with our time, but not our finances, or perhaps our finances, but not our time? When we sacrifice to the Lord by giving to him, we are not only saying we trust you, Lord, but we are putting a spiritual stake in the ground for our families and our generations to come. Today we can ask the Lord to help us to give freely. He wants each of us to give him first place in every area. So generously with your time, so generously with your finances. My second point is we can see blessings on a scale that we never imagined. We can see a great harvest. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. He reaped a hundredfold. What does this actually mean? Well, you may think of it as he reaped a hundred times what he had sown, but in actual fact, it is much greater than this. A hundredfold return means simply the greatest possible return of any particular seed sown. That is a huge harvest. When we sow with the Lord and according to his will and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can see far more than we could ever imagine is possible. God can totally expand all possibilities and expand every horizon in our lives, just like he did for his father Abraham when he said in Genesis 15 verse 5, he took him outside and he said, look up at the stars. If you indeed can count them, then he said to him, so shall be your offspring. We can see that the blessing came quickly too. It says in one year, in one season of time, he went from a little to a lot. This is the year when we can see abundance. With Jesus by our side, we can achieve great things. Just like the disciples who had fished all night and caught nothing, they saw a complete turnaround when they partnered with Jesus. It says in Luke 5 verse 4, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. We can also see the life of Joseph who went from prison to parliament. God can quickly make changes. Isaac reaped a great harvest in the year that he sowed. It didn't take a long time. We can be sure that the same God who blessed Isaac a hundredfold wants to bless you and your family too. Our third point is we need to understand that the source of blessing is God himself. Isaac prospered because the Lord blessed him. It says in scripture he became very wealthy. We need the blessing of God in our lives and we can receive it when we line up with the purposes of God. The blessing of the Lord kept coming to him and also for generations beyond. We can know God's blessing in our lives too. Blessings in our finances, our business, our family, our ministry. God wants to do greater things with you than you can ever imagine. The blessing was not Isaac's making, it was because the Lord blessed him as per the promise. God has given us the vision for the great harvest, so we must believe this and work in the areas that God shows us 
but also we need to allow God to work where he needs to. He wants to bless you and your family. When we receive the Lord's blessing, it's not only for us, but our, for our family and our future generations down the line. He wants to give you abundance in every area of your life. It's biblical. It says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And in Philippians 4 verse 19, it says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. If we want to see God's abundant blessing poured out, we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. God wants to bless us, but what is our focus? What are you sowing into? Don't waste your life by sowing into the wrong things. When we sow according to God, look what happens. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob were all blessed and we can be too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your great love to each one of us. Lord, I pray for this word to go into our hearts, that Isaac's life will be such an example to us, Lord, that we will consider what we are sowing into, that you will show us where there are things that we need to change, Lord. Lord, we wanna sow into the right things, Lord. We want to put you first each and every day, Lord, to seek your will for our lives and our families. Lord, I pray today that you would help to reveal the things that we need to lay down and the things that you would like us to focus on, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that it says in your word that you will bless us, Lord. We thank you for every blessing that we've already received and we thank you for every blessing that is to come. I pray all of these things in your name, Jesus, for your glory, amen. If you have never received the blessing of God in your life because you've never given your life to the Lord, you can take this opportunity now. Please repeat this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for me. I accept that you are the Son of God. Lord, forgive me for my independence when I've done things wrong and gone my own way. Today, I want to accept you into my life. I want to leave my old life behind and I want to follow you in every area. Cleanse me, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, please do connect with us on kcionline.org. Thank you for joining us today. King's Church International is a multi-generational, multi-racial church with over 50 nationalities represented. And it began with just five people in Slough during World War II. Today, our congregations meet on Sundays in Windsor, UK, Westminster, London, and in Robertson, South Africa. But throughout the week, we meet in many different areas in smaller groups known as life groups, which are the heart of the life of the church. We have age-specific programs for children and youth. And we also sponsor a Christian school in Windsor, which started in 2012, as well as supporting several schools in West Africa. Our focus as a church is on sharing the good news of Jesus locally and globally and developing committed disciples of Jesus and forming them as leaders. We follow a process known as the G12 vision following the example of Jesus in training 12 disciples. The G12 vision which was pioneered in one of the world's largest churches in Bogota, Colombia is very similar to the approach of 18th century evangelist John Wesley which brought lasting personal and social transformation in the UK and throughout the world. If you want to find out more about our ministry or get connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. God bless you.